All right, here we go. No here going we, back now. No going back now. Here we are. Here we are. We're still in Las Vegas. Close. <laughs> close. Very close. Yeah, we're still in Los Angeles. I'm here with Jeremy Lewis of Crypto.com. Nailed it. Nailed <laughs> Thank it. You. Thank you. Uh, so let's start with this, Jeremy. I know nothing. Okay. I know nothing about Crypto.com. Uh -huh. I know nothing about NFTs, nothing about blockchain, and I know nothing about you. Okay. So let's start with about you. A blank canvas to paint on. A That's a dangerous canvas. thing. Um, Maybe well, we'll make an NFT out of it. Well, we could. The difficult part is I've listened to too, a couple too many of your podcasts to know that's not true. In fact, you're quite good at getting, getting information out of people based off of your own reference and knowledge. So I'll, I'll pretend like that's false for a moment. Uh, uh, so for, for everyone who doesn't know me, my name is Jeremy Lewis. I do work at crypto.com. My title is Senior Director of NFT Acquisition, which I try to explain in the simplest terms of if there are NFTs involved and we think that there's a commercially interesting opportunity that falls underneath my wheelhouse. I like that. Doesn't mean no more complicated than that. And, and realistically, the, the, if the job title and the description didn't change a little bit from month to month, we're not doing things right. Um, you, to give a little bit of context to even this conversation, before we got started, you know, what do you want to talk about? What do you want to cover? And, and, and by my whole focus, and please call me out if I'm lying, is how do we find a way to package this information into a way where even if you have never heard anything before, this is for you. This is a good thing because there is always a situation. I mean, we've heard it over and over and over again. If you've listened to any of my podcasts. Which you should. <laughs> which you should. Find it on, go to Global Investor. Global Investor? We got to work on this part. Yeah. What is it called? Global Investor Conference. Okay. Globalinvestorconference.com. Go to the podcast section and you'll find it there. Link in bio. <laughs> <laughs> but um, link in bio. But... The challenge is a lot of people are intimidated and are thrown off course with the lack of understanding and the kind of words people use yep. in blockchain, crypto, and NFT. So if you'd help us streamline that, make it easy, make it simple. I think people feel confused and are, are get the either, oh, I went down the rabbit hole and I've listened and I've experienced so much content that said a lot of things that I don't understand, so I must not be there yet, or I, I should keep my mouth closed until I know. It's, it's a mixture. I'm a big fan of, you gotta do sometimes and fail a few times to figure out, oh, that, okay, got it, that, that, that doesn't work anymore. But at the same time, we're in a very weird age in a very weird part of the industry. No one in 1980 was at conferences saying, how stupid is email, huh? I mean, what a ridiculous form of media. They weren't saying that in 1975. They weren't saying it in 1995. They, they weren't even thinking about it, really, because it didn't reach that mass adoption to the point where, you know, in the 2000s, everyone was thinking about, wow, look how great email is. Similar to SMS, and I would even relate it to, from an entertainment perspective, it's like if the early 90s, people were going around going, man, MP2s, whoo, <laughs> man. That, that thing is, no, 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 MP3s are much better. No MP2, you didn't, no one was talking about this. Maybe Phillips, maybe people that ended up licensing the actual trademark itself. But the reason that it's so weird right now is because we, we are, know just enough to be dangerous in this world. We know just enough a way to go, oh, these are all, all these products that work well in Web2. Therefore, Web3 must be wrong because it doesn't work as well as this. And what's great about this time in history is that all of this is being recorded. And the people who are focused on all of the problems and see those as opportunities, get to have the receipts in 2029 when their product does reach that product market fit to go, great, I knew there was somebody out there who couldn't get a bank account. And I know that because that was my family. And now I don't have to worry about that when I wanna pay someone for something. We're not thinking about that over here. And so uh, that was a very long-winded way to say, we're just at a weird time with a lot of information and not as much ability to process it in a way that, that focuses it. And I think that's a really exciting time in our life. You know, <laughs> Jeremy Lewis of <laughs> Crypto.com. Nailed it. Now, we need to work on your own introduction, but that, that, that was fantastic. I'm bringing you with me forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like you're like Bruce Buffer for me before a fight. <laughs> love that. So actually, I, I think that is a really, I really love the part about there are people who are going to get the receipts out of that, who spend a little time paying attention to yeah. the space. I can remember the days, and I'm going back a, um, a decade, when I was in Kenya, and um, 
you know, it's like I'm walking around with cash to pay in a store, and they said, well, we don't take any cash. We use M-Pesa? this thing called M-Pesa. Yeah. I yeah. Said, what and the they still do. Yeah, of course. M-Pesa, Google tried to buy M-Pesa, mm-hmm. and they said, no way. Um, or was it Facebook that tried to buy M-Pesa? One of them tried to buy M-Pesa. And it was like really weird. It's like, I have to use my phone to make a purchase, and all I have to do is touch a button. Incredible. What an incredible technology. What an idea. If I paid attention to it 10 years ago, guess what? I would be writing the show here today. <laughs> um, but I like that. So as we start, of course, we're in a bad time. I, if you look at what's happened in the last six months, it's erased anything, any sort of gain that's happened in the last seven years. If you look at the public market, sure. and then you look at the implosion of NFTs, you know, it used to be hype, hyper, now it's sort of like, ah, I'm a little bit scared about it. Um, so as we are looking at this space today, and we're listening to this podcast for the very first time, and we're thinking, we're not afraid because we don't know what happened yesterday, what should we be looking for? The question, to, to answer that question, we need to go two steps back. Who's we? Good question. Who is we? Because um, depending on the answer, I, I have a different answer. Because we, if I can't pay for lunch tomorrow and my roof doesn't work and I don't know who's going to hire me so I can pay for these things, we's a very different answer. I would say that when I come from that context, it's entrepreneurs who are building businesses mm-hmm. and investors who are investing in that business. Got it. Got it. If you're in the, if you have the information at your fingertips to know that there's things that are not being built that you think should be built, right? Which is a very, I, I know that being an entrepreneur has become something that's like ubiquitous with just uh, being a millennial and Gen Z at this point. But if you have this urge or rush to build something that you see that isn't built already, that is a very specific person. But for that person, I think this is a great time. And I know that investment dollars and VCs, both domestic and global, are looking at things a lot differently. But we can all agree, valuations a year ago were ridiculous. Yeah. Ridiculous. And I think actually, although it's, it feels like a little more painful right now, I think it was actually a worse time a year ago when we were raising at things that were just never going to be able to pan out. And, and failure was almost built in to the point where this is actually a lot more of a healthy economy and a healthy environment. Reality doesn't always have to be things go up and to the right. That's how things work. Like the joke in the crypto goes, the crypto just goes up, was too too true for too long. And I think looking through all of the haze and almost either ignoring it and looking down where we are or looking past where we are today, we got to find that balance. And the balance is that there's never been a time where we have as much information about how things come together and how they perform in real time like we do today. 10, 12, 15 years ago, when, 15 years ago, when YouTube was Google videos, right? Yeah. And when MySpace was the king of social media, and when we looked at the way that we interacted with the internet a little bit differently, we weren't sitting there going, man, I gotta find an editor and a producer that live in different time zones, so that way when I flip my content to them, and by the morning I'll be able to produce that and put that onto YouTube. What everyone, a great thing. Everyone knows that yeah. now. Everyone, everyone in the business is, 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 is a creator. When you think about entrepreneurs, I think about entrepreneurs in the light of, oh, I'm, I'm someone who wants to build something on the technical side. Somebody wants to build something on the content side. I'm somebody who wants to build something from an audience that is into the same niche that I am. The creators of today who understand the value of things that they do not understand and finding those partners and teams to help build in the NFT world, it's the artist, it's the someone who can write a smart contract. It's someone who can actually manage the money in the treasury when it comes in. It's someone who can sit in the discord all day and speak to somebody in a language that might not be their native tongue. Those all have value. And I don't care what the project is. In a market like today, when there's a lot of opinions, a lot of speculative opportunities and observations, if you don't think about things from not your perspective, but the consumer perspective, it's very difficult to see success. Entrepreneurs and creators today understand that we need to build things in a way that makes sense to people who don't already understand what we're putting out in the world. It's, yes, it's a difficult task. Yes, it's more challenging than it ever has been. And yes, it's possible. I want to put a no in there somewhere. Um, 
if we look at the consumers of today mm -hmm. and we look at the consumers of tomorrow and as we continue to develop all of these things that we're working on what is the difference between the two consumers today and tomorrow well, besides hindsight um, I think the difference today and the difference tomorrow is that the trust that the, that the consumers of tomorrow or the skepticism will be founded on more real life success stories or failures. And I know that it's difficult to, to, to say, well, of course, it's obvious. It's not obvious. How often can you give somebody else a piece of advice that you would never take for yourself? And it's only because you can see through the trees, oh, you're, you're giving too much weight to this. This is how this makes sense. We are in an opportunity, we're in an industry that is very tied to people's money, tied to the same thing they use sometimes to pay rent or mortgage or take an opportunity or a risk. Until we have enough trust that, oh, this is something that I do because I've done it before. This is something I don't do anymore because it didn't like, yield those results. Until we feel that in our gut and it really is tied to more of the emotions, it doesn't matter what the math looks like. We're humans, we're people, we all make those decisions. Yeah. And so when it ties back to the NFT and, and it ties back to Web3, it ties into blockchain as a whole, we have a natural instinct and reaction to things that we don't fully understand. And we're always going to let just gravitate towards the things we do. So when you hear somebody loses a bunch of money, or when you see someone go through a really difficult time because they're being on the cutting edge of innovation, and you don't have a dozen success stories to kind of balance that out, of course you're going to equate things in a negative light. Yeah. And, and, and sadly, and unfortunately, this isn't an entertaining answer that, that goes beyond anything that we aren't used to in any other industry. We, we know what we know. I think it's Maya Angelou that said, when you know better, you do better. And when it comes down to it, we just need more time for humans to do right by humans to prove, okay, yeah. I can trust this. I'm going to do a little bit a uh, little bit of a pickup on that. So the question that I have been asking and I need uh, to understand more is you've got the traditional businesses, the large size, the large size businesses, large companies. Sure. Uh, and then you've got the upcoming companies today. Sure. And there's a differentiation between a customer and a community. Ooh, okay. Um, so yeah. how would you describe the difference there's this is such a timely question because I think the only person that can answer this accurately is the same person that can answer why NFTs and blockchain are important which is the person that's listening to this in 2041 <laughs> 2041 yeah sure <laughs> the first the first smartphone was invented in 1993 okay what was it IBM I believe did how is your IBM smartphone performing because I, I don't have one Right. Well, mine's pretty good. Yeah, good, good, <laughs> good. Uh, and though I say that in the sense that people are starting to realize, and by people I mean the, the leaders of these organizations or the leaders of these organizations' grandkids that are telling them, you know, Grandma, Grandpa, you're so out of touch, right? Everything, everyone is a creator. Every brand has to give a somewhat different approach than just the product on the shelves. And whether that's physical or whether that's digital, right? When I hear, and not to make this too literally meta, when I hear people go, well, what is the matter? Oh, no, that's never going to work. People aren't going to buy into that. You've been buying into that. For as long as there's been a blue check mark on a social platform to a fast food restaurant that you give a little bit of weight to because, oh, that's the real thing versus the one that does not, we've been buying into this concept. And so the difference between the consumers and the, the customers or the community, right, is that as it stands today, there are a lot of ways to reach your consumer that's very separated from your immediate or direct touch. For an example, Disney has been in the business of, of making content for quite some time. In fact, I think finally Mickey Mouse is going to fall out of public domain and no matter what Sonny Bono Act says, people are gonna be able to create these derivative works. And the reason I bring it up is it wasn't until Disney Plus a few years ago that outside of the parks, when people would fly to Florida, would fly to California, Disney got to interact with their customers directly. If they put a piece of content down and it goes to a movie theater, they might get the, the, the sales results of them, but they don't know who those people are. Yeah. If they put a piece of content down and it goes to ABC and it gets broadcast, they might get a general location because Nielsen gives them information back in, in, in bulk. Yeah. But today, Disney knows 
who? Not even just like what house. Who is listening? Who is watching in their house today because they go on to Disney Plus and they watch that content immediately? And they also know when they visit that site and when they go and do something else, what type of individual and consumer they are. And so we are going to be faced with this opportunity and also risk of brands can get as close to their customer, consumer, and the people adjacent to them closer than they've ever been able to do before. Who is going to use that power for good? And who is going to create a brand that is built on, hey, no matter, way you're, no matter where you interface with us, whether it's for free or whether it's online or whether it's buying our, our product, do we do right by you? And the shift is gonna be over probably 10 or 15, 20 years here, but that's starting today. So that uh, it raises another question. When you look at the creation of Web 3.0, and it's the idea that you are your own creator, marketer, revenue generator, and ownership mm -hmm. of who you are. Mm -hmm. If we then allow big or large companies to create NFTs of us, who then now owns that? Because your data is viewed by, maybe used by or abused by, these large size corporations. Well, let's be clear, they're doing that already. Okay. <laughs> but the creation of Web, Web 3.0 is the idea that you can separate state from kingdom. Yes, yes. I think the idea is not that you can separate it. That, that, that idea has been around for as long as you could be off the grid, right? Yeah. And when does the convenience outweigh the um, giving up of whatever it was to get here? I, I don't know... Um, who uses a physical map to get anywhere anymore because, well, there's a, a, an app in everyone's phone that will get them there. Yeah, yeah. The difference is, I guess I have one question before I think I dive into that. When you say we allow them to do something, we allowed them to create this entity, what, what relationship well, is that? So, so the relationship is like, okay, I'm a customer of mm -hmm. Nike today, which means I go and buy something sure. and Nike says, yeah, here's your pair of shoes. Uh, they've got a lifetime warranty. I, they fall apart in two weeks, but whatever. Sure. That's a little bit of a gift to Nike. Um, Nike, I love you. We, we can work together whenever. I, actually, no, I like Nike too. <laughs> this guy, this guy, flip flop. In, in, in 2024 election cycle comes around, you're gonna be great for this. <laughs> so then, then we look at NFTs. Sure. Created by Nike. Sure. That engage with me. Sure. All of a sudden, I'm much closer to Nike, Nike's much closer to me, and the interaction and the relationship is much more one-to-one. -one. Now, all of a sudden, I didn't have that separation that I perhaps wanted, but inadvertently with NFTs, I'm now much more tied to the hip. The difference isn't that NFTs are now involved, right? Nike's been begging and has been investing in that that potential relationship for years. Do you have the Nike app on your phone? I'll say yes. Okay. Well, for those who have the Nike app on their phone, and when you go to checkout, they're asking you, hey, do you have the Nike app? Because they're going to reward you for being a good customer. Do you have a smartwatch? I'll say yes. Sure. <laughs> the Nike app for fitness has been trying to get closer to those customers for years. Now, some people are really in their ecosystem and love that relationship, and some people want no part. What NFTs present is an opportunity to take that customer journey and give the user the opportunity to say, maybe I don't want to segment my relationship with Nike in the way that I segment it currently from their competitors. Maybe I want to take control of my identity, what I own, what I do, how I do it, and allow that identity to be taken with me to Nike before I even buy something. Or maybe I don't want to take that with me. What it presents is the opportunity for us as a user to create a tokenized <laughs> version of ourselves that we can choose to expose or not based off the level of permissions we want to give somebody. And so I think it's less about the permission to give this, this, this. It's more about I want to choose and have an opportunity to present the way that I am a consumer to these brands either as a whole or as individuals. And that's the power there. Okay. Because before, Nike looks at every user as some encrypted hash 
that's bought these shoes and these department stores are here. And maybe they're smart enough to have a data set that combines where they're walking or where they're running or what they're using that came before after a purchase. Now it flips. As the user, I get to decide what type of information I want to give them. That's powerful. <coughs> Are you seeing this adoption uh, uh, segmented globally, or is this a U.S. thing? The NFT, is it in the purview of you and I, because we're here, we're inundated, we have so much information, or is it a global phenomenon? I try my absolute best to never look at this from my perspective. And it's, of course, I can't get away from it, right? I go back to Kenyan and Passive in particular. I didn't know about that money system until I started working in the cryptocurrency vertical. Specifically because all of the best use cases that I come up with in my head have very little to do with multi-thousand dollar entrances into a community that is limited to a ceiling the day it's begun. I don't see that as the end-all be-all future. There'll be a place for that, there will, just like there's currently a place for Soho House, or there's currently a place for the country club, wherever you live, that never seemed to give me a call back, or I couldn't afford it even if they did. To me, I look at this in the sense that people are going to go and spend their time, and when they spend their time, their money would follow, they're going to go and spend their time and money and, and give their trust to the services, products, and brands that serve them best. And until NFTs, Web3, blockchain as a whole, and cryptocurrency do what that money system in Kenya does a little bit better, it's not going to be a priority. But I can assure you that once it is serving that specific population a little bit better, a little bit more naturally, and passive better have a really good plan. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's talk a little bit about regulation yeah. or deregulation or unregulated environments. Uh, US centric first and then globally. What does that look like in this NFT space? Oh. What second isn't currently and are we going to put timestamps in here? <laughs> <laughs> um, here's what I know. We don't know. And what I do know is that for anybody out there who's trying to be cute or trying to create something where they think there's going to be an opportunity for them to be smarter than the insert whatever the regulating body is in here. I'm not interested in that plan. What I know is this. If you are doing something new and innovative, there's a good chance it doesn't completely fit into the regulatory landscape as it is today. And you have to make the decision on whether or not you're going to constantly be interested in what you're building and innovative and how it relates to that policy as today, or if you're going to ignore it, pretend it's just white noise and build forward. I don't know what the right path for it is. I really don't. But I do know that the things that I'm involving my time in are the ones who are aware of the relationship between whatever the regulated body is and that actual user, and is taking that into consideration when they're going to ask people to give them their time, their money, and their trust so that they don't put themselves into a position that they wish they hadn't six to 12 months from now. Yeah, and you're seeing that all over the place, of course. right? Right, so the, the other, the, 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 the following question then becomes, if we curb our enthusiasm to build innovative products and companies and, and infrastructure and wait for the law to catch up or repurpose the law to what we're doing, are we curbing progress? I don't know what entrepreneur out there, good entrepreneur, one that I'm going to believe in and put my own trust and money into, who has ever understood the concept of weight. Okay. And you might strategically push back your delivery dates on specific features and products, of course. But to wait, no. No, no, no. You have to see where you're at today. You have to take your risk appetite. You most importantly have to know where you want to go. Because if you look back at all the major innovations, right? Anyone that's done anything that, that has, has really stood the test of time, they challenged every norm. But they challenged it in a way because they looked through to the future and had a plan on how to get there and adjusted so. So it really does come down to, are you going to be bold enough, but also do it in a way where you have enough reason to believe that the way that you're moving forward is going to be something that can actually make the world a better place? It's not always going to work, but I'd much rather fail doing that than trying to ignore everything 
not look to the, to the advice of people that know things that we do not, going back to that conversation, and working together to get to where you want to be. Where is crypto.com going and f- finding new paths? Yeah, to- crypto.com is in a unique position today. The industry is very young. People think and feel like it's been a while because they've gone through a couple cycles, but the industry is still very young. Crypto.com, from my small you know, office in Los Angeles, of, right, of, of, of where I sit into it, is interested in finding ways to look at every wallet and every consumer and not make them fall in love with Bitcoin tomorrow and not make them close their Bank of America, Chase, HSBC. No. Instead, how do we find a way to engage with their lifestyle in a way that wouldn't be possible without cryptocurrency? And then once we've done that, how do we find a way to make that experience better, never be satisfied with any part of the product, and continue to build products around that that continue to make their life better? Because we're not going to make someone, nor I think is anybody interested for my team, in making them fall in love with one part of what this does differently. No, it's how do we meet people to where they are today, or how do we create products that we know are going to influence or make that community a little bit better down the road, and make sure that when they make that decision, we're the product they use. Okay. And so I noticed on crypto.com, it's uses... It's weird. It's weird. You said you didn't know about anything about crypto.com <laughs> at the beginning of this interview. So <laughs> it's, it's user-centric to where you are. Yeah. Um, and so what I'm assuming from that, it is regulated in the various jurisdictions that it's created in. Mm-hmm. And that's a smart thing to do, right? Yeah. So you don't cross purposes. What else are you doing at Crypto.com that's innovative, that's going to encompass global growth? Share this with other companies that are still budding. What should they be doing and looking at? Every entrepreneur is faced with the question of when they reach a crossroad and they don't have an answer, build, borrow, buy. You have to ask yourself. Not everything should be bought. Not everything should be built. And I have a feeling, and I I personally feel, that what we've done better than a lot of the other brands that are out there is that we've looked around the world to people and brands and relationships with those individuals to say, if we are able to do right by them and they're able to do right by us, is this something that we want to publicly announce and signal to the world that, hey, the way that they do business, we want to be a part of that. And it started here in Los Angeles at, at the biggest scale with Staples Center becoming Crypto.com Arena and, and partnering with, with AEG Global in a way that I don't think anyone truly realizes just how impactful that will be. And you see it in micro areas where, as you said, different things become available to different communities at different times. The things that don't make the biggest public spotlight or splash for a global PR release you know, every other week, I think we're going to come to find are the things that actually end up being a lot more impactful down the road than the things that maybe got the most clicks. And when it comes to the things that I'm focused on, specifically with the NFT platform and what we're doing is how do we look through the noise, not get distracted and find the partners who do a thing that is beyond what we can do. And we build for the future in a way that we are able to accomplish something together that one, nobody else in the world could have done, but most importantly, the two sides here would have been able to do without the other. So, it's shopping time. Yeah. Where everything's at a discount. I can't... Huge No, discount. not financial advice. <laughs> <laughs> Huge discount. What sorts of companies and products and technologies is crypto.com buying? I have, I have no idea. No idea. That's a good answer. No, I have no idea. No idea. Um, I, I, we have teams that are so much smarter and better at that exact, exact thing that are, are looking into that. And I do think we do a better job of not putting that out on Twitter first before we make those moves. Um, but I have no idea. The things that if I were in those positions that I'd be looking for, are who's going to build the tools that allow somebody who has four-fifths of the skill set to get involved but doesn't have that last 20% that if this tool's built, they're in the game. Those are the things that I'm looking for. Those are the things that I'm personally interested in. Okay, let's turn the question around, right? To the audience out there and hope there's more than four. Thousand. Thousand. Concurrent. <laughs> yes. Um, who should be looking at crypto.com and why? Well, I oftentimes at the end of my, my 
my panels and my speeches with these cryptocurrency comments, they, they, like they like to end with the, um, uh, why should you get involved? Or tell people why today they need to move and, and get into this. And it's not that I don't want this community to get bigger and, and grow and be more innovative, but if a product or a brand or an offering doesn't speak to you, why would you speak back? And so when I, when I think of the people that are interested in, and potentially, you know, why they would be interested in crypto.com, users and consumers, once they begin to be interested enough to take that leap, you have to get into these, these services, you have to log in, you have to read enough to figure out where you fit into it. And so the first thing is to, to one, do your own research. By that I mean spend time first, time before money. And then after you spend some time with it, if something doesn't resonate with you, that's okay. Walk away. Yeah. So that wasn't my last question because you said it's everybody's last question. Here is my last question. Maybe. As a company, mm -hmm. what are you as a company doing to elevate the global humanity population to be a better place to live? Sure. Sure. The... The interesting piece that crypto.com, and when I look at it from my angle in particular, the interesting piece and the offering that is very, very much true internally and I think resonates externally is that our moves individually as a brand don't need to see immediate success the next day for us to stick to it. And what I mean by that is I've, I've worked in and around selling media to tech or tech to media my entire career oftentimes in smaller companies. And at the end of every quarter, if the numbers weren't hit, Molly's gone. Steve's out. Chris, he has to find a new job, right? At this company, we look at things from an ecosystem lens. How do we invest today in the people and the time and the tools and the industry that might not be the thing that is the, the cash cow at the end of the quarter? But if we don't do that, we're not going to be able to, in seven years, be where we want to be. And so the most important piece and the thing that I think we're doing that's a little bit different than those who don't have the scale that we have is that we're looking through the noise and just past the trees to the point where what do we need to build today? What do we need to borrow today? Or what do we need to buy today that will make the best experience for people who, going back to the point of if it's not for you today, when we do create something that, ooh, let me give it a try, what do we need to do today to make sure that that person stays? That's our focus. Great. Jeremy Lewis. Yes, sir. Of Crypto.com. <laughs> it's a wrap. Thank you so much for having me on. Did I miss anything out? Uh, you, you didn't miss a thing. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you.